The four-wheel drive truck systems you learned about in part one of this program represent the current state-of-the-art in Ford Tough off-road capability. But they're only half the story. In recent years, new technology has allowed normal, on-the-road passenger vehicles to take advantage of the all-weather security of four-wheel drive, even though they'll never head for the back country. The growing number of all-wheel and four-wheel drive passenger vehicles is one of the important automotive trends in recent years. Such systems are often found on more upscale and more expensive models like the Audi Quattro. So it was a real sales opportunity when Ford introduced an affordable all-wheel drive system on the Tempo and Topaz. And now the electronic four-wheel drive system offered on Aerostar will lead the growing minivan market segment in a completely new direction. It's important to realize, however, that the buyers interested in these vehicles are quite different from most traditional four-wheel drive truck buyers. And this is reflected in the technical features and operation of the vehicles themselves. For example, since these vehicles are not intended to operate off-road, they do not have additional ground clearance, skid plate protection, or a low range in the transfer case, features found on most 4x4 trucks. Instead, they have comfortable passenger car suspensions and normally use conventional, quiet-running, all-season radial tires. And since most of these buyers have no interest in becoming expert four-wheel drivers, the systems are designed to be more user-friendly. The technology assumes more of the responsibility for doing the right thing at the right time. As you might imagine, that technical sophistication can make these systems quite complicated from an engineering standpoint. But it's not really necessary to understand all the high-tech details. Just as you can use a personal computer without being a programmer, a few basic principles will give you and your customers enough knowledge to effectively utilize the all-weather capability Ford has built into these vehicles. Best of all, now that you understand traditional four-wheel drive systems, you're already halfway there. So let's take a closer look at what each of these on-road systems have to offer. This is Ford's all-wheel drive Tempo. Functionally, it is identical to the all-wheel drive Topaz, offered by Lincoln Mercury Division. In appearance, there is very little to distinguish this model from any other tempo you might see on the road. But don't let appearances fool you. When the weather gets bad, this particular tempo proves that it's no ordinary family sedan. Compared with the conventional front-wheel drive tempo, the all-wheel drive model has several additional powertrain components. First, a transfer case is mounted underneath the regular automatic transaxle. When it's engaged, the transfer case takes power from the transaxle and sends it through a drive shaft to a rear limited slip differential. From there, it goes to the rear wheels through axle half shafts. However, this is not simply a part-time system flip front to rear. There are some important differences between this system and that found on four-wheel drive trucks. First, while the system uses convenient push-button controls like touch drive, there are only two operational modes that the driver can select. It's either on or off. When the system selector is set to off, engine power bypasses a transfer case going to the front wheels through the automatic transaxle in the normal manner. There is no need for a transfer case neutral position and of course, neither does it have a low range because it's not an off-road system. Furthermore, the rear wheels have no hubs to disconnect them from their axles, so there is no need to get out of the car to lock or unlock them. However, since all-wheel drive lacks a center differential in the transfer case to accommodate differences in speed between front and rear wheels, it should not be driven on hard, dry pavement with the system on. At the least, this would cause increased tire wear and poor vehicle handling during cornering. At worst, it could seriously damage drive components as a result of torque windup. There are also three important corollaries to keep in mind. First, the vehicle should not be towed while in all-wheel drive. Second, 
Don't mix tire sizes. For example, make sure the all-wheel drive system is off if you have to use a temporary spare tire. Third, while in all-wheel drive, don't use speed control. Of course, a prudent driver wouldn't consider using speed control anyway under the slippery road conditions which warrant all-wheel drive. But with those cautions, let's see how all-wheel drive can be properly used to provide more sure-footed confidence when the driving conditions go bad. Actually, the theory is a lot harder than practice. Ordinarily, the all-wheel drive system is off under normal driving conditions, so we're traveling in front-wheel drive just like any other tempo or topaz. But, particularly in the winter, the road conditions can change very suddenly, and snow-covered roads can be very difficult. When this happens, simply push the switch on the all-wheel drive control. Of course, you should always plan ahead and engage the all-wheel drive before you get bogged down. But if you do get stuck, to avoid gear clash, wait for the front wheels to stop spinning before engaging the system. Now the rear wheels will start driving. And because of the standard limited slip rear axle, the all-wheel drive system also compensates for rear wheel slippage. From the driver's standpoint, the difference in traction is so dramatic that it's important to remind yourself of three things. First, all-wheel drive will not improve braking performance in slippery conditions. Second, most other vehicles you encounter on the road will not have the same traction and maneuverability you do, so it's your responsibility to stay out of their way. Finally, you can still lose steering control on inherently slick surfaces like glare ice. So even if you feel in complete control during bad weather, slow down. When road conditions improve, you can return to front wheel drive just as easily. Again, just turn off the system with the control switch. The system also turns off automatically whenever the engine is turned off. Incidentally, the all-wheel drive system does not affect trailer towing capability on tempo or tow pads while the system is off. But when trailer towing, the system should only be used under road conditions where it would be needed anyway. Then, trailer towing speed should be kept below 40 miles per hour. As a reminder, here are some other important points to make whenever you deliver an all-wheel drive model. The system is not intended to be used off-road like a conventional 4x4, but rather is designed strictly for on-road use. The system also should not be used on dry pavement with different sized tires while the speed control is on or while the vehicle is being towed. Essentially, what these cautions boil down to is this. Use the system on the road in the conditions for which it was designed, in snow, sand, mud, or any other situation which causes you to become concerned about drive traction. Then, the all-wheel drive system on tempo and tow pads will provide peace of mind, which more than outweighs its modest increased cost. The Ford Aerostar has become a familiar sight in American neighborhoods. Because of its versatility as a people mover and cargo hauler, it has proven to be an ideal family wagon or small business van. And now it offers a new option which not only adds even more versatility, it actually makes Aerostar's drivetrain one of the most technically sophisticated for vehicles of its type on the road. I'm speaking about Aerostar's new electronic four-wheel drive system, which in several respects advances the state of the art in four-wheel drive technology. Unlike most car or truck systems, it uses a dedicated microprocessor, a computer, to adjust the flow of engine power and torque to the wheels, providing optimized traction and fuel economy. 
Sound too good to be true? Well, here's how it all works. At first glance, Aerostar's electronic four-wheel drive system appears to be laid out just like a part-time system. With a transfer case taking power from the output of the transmission and sending it to front and rear wheels through separate drive shafts, differentials, and axles. But this is a full-time system. It's always on, always working, without the need for driver input, and it does not require freewheeling hubs at the front wheels. Experienced Ford salespeople may recall the old full-time four-wheel drive systems in trucks of the 70s. These systems went the way of the dinosaur because the technology available at the time limited fuel efficiency. So I want to emphasize that by comparison, this new system is very different. In fact, with all other components like the 4-liter engine, automatic transmission, and options being equal, this system is expected to average within about one mile per gallon of a comparable two-wheel drive Aerostar. The key to both the convenience and efficiency of this system is its remarkable transfer case design. The transfer case incorporates a center differential to equalize normal speed differences between front and rear wheels, which occur, for example, when cornering. Unlike part-time four-wheel drive truck systems, this permits operation on dry pavement without scrubbing tires or causing torque windup. But the feature which really sets this transfer case design apart is its electromagnetic clutch assembly. Based on input from shaft speed sensors, the clutch operates under computer control to almost instantly lock up both front and rear drive shafts if any one of the wheels start to slip. Ordinarily, under normal road conditions, power and torque from the transmission enters the transfer case, where it is split apart by the planetary differential assembly. Two-thirds of the torque continues to the rear wheels, while one-third goes to the front drive shaft through the chain drive. This torque split provides the advantage of front-pulling wheels without sacrificing Aerostar's rear-wheel drive trailer towing capability. In this instance, electronic four-wheel drive represents an uncompromised improvement over front-wheel drive minivans. In fact, although towing capacity is not increased, the driver's control of Aerostar's trailer towing capabilities is enhanced with the system under most road conditions. Because the front drive wheels actually help pull the vehicle through turns, this also contributes to better handling. Combined with the stiffer suspension, the reduction of body lean is immediately noticeable. You should point out to all prospects that an integral part of this system is a new 4-liter engine. It offers V6 smoothness and is projected to provide about 17% more power and 45% more torque than the standard 3-liter. For greater convenience, the 4-liter engine is combined with the new heavy-duty A4LD automatic overdrive transmission. So even if you never encounter severe weather driving conditions, Aerostar's electronic four-wheel drive system could still provide some important advantages in trailer towing, performance, and handling. On the other hand, when conditions do get bad, in rain or worse, this system really takes command. For example, it's very easy in conditions like patchy snow for one or more wheels to slip. With less resistance, the drive shaft to that axle will turn faster than the other one. Shaft speed is detected by the sensors which send the signal to the computer for comparison. When the computer determines that a wheel is slipping, it energizes the coils in the magnetic clutch. The clutch essentially locks the two drive shafts together as one mechanical unit, so the slipping wheel can no longer rob all the power from the wheels which are not slipping. This occurs in less than half a second. When it releases, the computer checks to see if the slipping condition still exists. If it does, or if some other wheel starts to spin, the clutch locks back up again. In practice, the locking and unlocking of the transfer case will occur repeatedly in slippery driving conditions. This compensation for wheel slip is all controlled by the computer. 
The driver is virtually unaware of it, other than a very slight sensation like that of an upshifting automatic transmission. While all this is going on, you don't have to shift or push buttons or take any other action except keep your hands on the wheel and enjoy the benefits of the system. The computer control is so quick and so sure that no driver could react as effectively. In fact, other than the improved sense of traction, from the driver's position, there isn't even any indication this vehicle is equipped with four-wheel drive, except the indicator light on the instrument panel, which illuminates briefly during vehicle startup. During operation, the onboard computer constantly monitors system operation and would also illuminate this light if it found anything wrong with the four-wheel drive system. The only time the system operates differently than the way I've explained is under braking conditions then the computer will not engage the clutch. That's to avoid a conflict with the rear anti-lock brake system, which tries to keep the rear wheels rotating to avoid a rear axle lockup condition. The result is that we get the benefits of both systems. The only exception here is when the Aerostar is operating below three miles per hour, such as a parking maneuver, when you'd want both brakes and four-wheel drive. Then you've got them. Despite the fact that the electronic four-wheel drive system provides the best possible traction under virtually all road surfaces and driving conditions, it was designed to interfere as little as possible with the passenger and cargo handling capabilities of the vehicle. For example, ride height is only about half an inch taller than the two-wheel drive Aerostar, which means it's still garageable and has nearly the same step in height. But the system is designed for on-road use, so in any demonstration drive, you should point out that this vehicle is not intended for use off-road. But other aspects of the demo drive are greatly simplified. Since the system requires no special action on the part of the driver, there is nothing the customer has to do to enjoy the benefits of the system. That means the prospect can concentrate on the feedback from the vehicle as he or she encounters adverse conditions. Delivery is also simplified, but here are some points you should be sure to cover about electronic four-wheel drive. Again, make sure new owners understand that the system is designed for on-road use and is not an off-road system. By the same token, customers should be cautioned not to become overconfident about road conditions due to the increased traction. And make sure new owners read the owner guide because there are some additional maintenance requirements. Other than that, you can be certain that buyers will quickly recognize the advantages this sophisticated technology offers. It's available on both regular and extended length vans and wagons, and it's a marketing opportunity that, for the time being, belongs exclusively to Ford. Aerostar's new electronic four-wheel drive system joins all-wheel drive, part-time four-wheel drive, and touch drive to give your customers yet another foul weather friend from Ford. We urge you to become a four-wheel drive expert and take advantage of these versatile products in a still-growing market segment.